gonna take a look at this. This guy, he tried uh, the beta. I didn't, but I saw some gameplay, and yeah, I want to see what what this is about compared to um, to World. Everyone, it's officially time. Monster Hunter Wilds is here. I have it. Not the whole thing. It's an open beta. They basically are doing this thing where they're letting people try it to test server infrastructure, to test all sorts of stuff. But if you are a PlayStation Plus subscriber, you can try it right now. And if you're on Steam or Xbox, you'll be able to, but it's just gonna take uh, another few days. But in this video, I wanted to give you an idea of what the game actually <laughs> has to offer. I've been playing it for the last few hours with my buddy, Corey. Shout out to Corey, who got me into Monster Hunter originally with Monster Hunter World uh, to start with. And so I have some thoughts after doing a handful of monster hunts and seeing what this very, very slim sliver of the game has to offer. But to give you a quick synopsis, I really enjoyed my time so far with really Monster slim? Wilds. I've been okay. constantly surprised at how familiar it feels while still offering some fresh ideas. It does not feel like a reinvention. It does not feel like anything totally crazy or, or wild. It's more Monster Hunter in the best way possible. And while I have a couple of concerns here and there that I'll point out here in just a minute, overall, I am even more confident that this is uh, another Capcom slam dunk, which uh, is is perhaps sorely needed in the industry. So oh, <laughs> we always nice. need more Capcom slam dunks, don't we? So uh, yeah, we're going to talk all about it. But first, I want to say thank you to our sponsor for this video, HelloFresh. HelloFresh is the meal delivery service. I mean, that uh, we're just going to jump a little back because um, if you can see this, DualSense Edge. Holy shit, that's an expensive controller, but I want it. I want it. It looks, it looks good. I, it sure as hell, may, uh, it, I bet it will feel good. Like, give it to me, I want it! But first, I want to say thank you to our sponsor for this video, HelloFresh. HelloFresh is the meal delivery service that delivers fresh ingredients for you to prep meals right to your front door. They have a big menu for you to pick all sorts of options, whether you're trying to diet or you're just looking for some good soul food, they probably have it available. You make the order and then everything is delivered fresh to your front door with easy to read instructions for the recipes you've ordered and you put the meals together and enjoy. No more meandering through the grocery store trying to figure out what you're going to do for meals that week. Hello fresh takes all of the headache out of that and just delivers fresh ingredients with the recipes straight to your door. Furthermore, HelloFresh makes it easy to change your delivery from week to week. So whether you're looking for a different type of food or if you're traveling and you need to skip a week, all of that is easy as pie. Yeah, I said pie. You hungry? <laughs> <laughs> and to make the deal all the better, they're actually including breakfast for life. So long as you maintain an active subscription for everybody that signs up using my codes in the description box or that you see on screen. So check them out today at the link in the video description box below and make sure to use my code when you sign up so that you get 10 free meals and that free breakfast for And one tried okay, HelloFresh. Luke from the past. Let's get back into it. I want to describe my feelings in the opening hour or so because I started this up. I made like a basic character in the character creator and then I just was like start 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 let's go and uh yeah, I'll just I'll I'll explain but uh i had a little heart attack about 27 minutes or so into this i was actually a little scared when i first booted it up because when you first boot it up you see this screen and then you go through a handful of little cutscenes. and then this happened where i finished a mission i was like okay what what's happening fade to black and then i got this splash screen this was like all of 27 minutes into my playtime, and I was like, no way, this is only a 27 minute beta where we fought one tutorial monster. Damn. Like I can't complain, it was free, but that's so disappointing. But no, 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 no. It's it's not like that at all. As you can see, there's another like two hours after this. Like there's a lot more, they just, like that's where the, the story progression ends, and then it's just gonna open up and let you freely do whatever okay. you want. But <laughs> yeah, I had a little heart attack when I saw this. I was 30 like, no, minutes! It's only 27 oh, beta. minutes, come on. But there's plenty more, there's plenty more. So don't have a heart attack when you see this. Now, the first thing you're probably gonna notice is just how different the map layouts are. This is what's particularly so much striking, better. and I'm still not totally Hold on. sure where I land on it. They have totally revamped a ton of things. For one, the map is way better. It's actually Holy usable. Shit. It's a full 3D map. Wow, So you can actually is. like 
trace how the maps are laid out if you didn't play monster hunter rise well, that's or World, huge like, this probably doesn't look that impressive but if you played those games you know how bad those maps were they were basically unusable just like pieces yep. of paper basically stacked on top of each other but now <laughs> you can actually get in and see individual granularity my only note okay. on this that i hope they balance as we get closer is it's super sensitive so if you touch it even just a tad, it zooms oh. out a ton or very quickly. Holy and if you do a hard shit. press where it triggers the adaptive trigger thing, it zooms all the way out completely. So you'll have many times where we accidentally zoom all the way in if you're trying to quickly check a map. Wow. So that's something I hope that they tweak and adjust. Yeah, that is just not a good. a little too sensitive for my life. <laughs> just but a little bit. <laughs> other than that, this is just like wonderful. This is so much better than it used yeah, to be. It I is. can't even begin to tell you. I also wanted to show you some more stuff in camp. The layers, uh, same as in Doom. You see the layers of the map. You can see what's on the ground, on the ground and instead of a 2D map or whatever, you, you don't know if you, okay, is it above me? Is it underneath me? Where the hell? So yeah, that's that's great. But a lot of this stuff is not actually available. You try to talk to people and they have like a line saying they're prepping still and there's nothing else beyond that. So I'm sorry if you were hoping for blacksmith footage, I do not have it. And then there's also this <laughs> cat over here named Tom, who I was really Tommy! looking forward to working with. But he also says he needs more Jenny! time. So uh, this beta is definitely just about getting you in, doing a couple of cutscenes, letting you do character customizer and all of that, and then kind of setting you free to just go and do some random hunts with a few monsters. But other than that, they're not going to do a whole lot. They also have seamless character transitions between okay. like the character creator and then into yeah, I've seen that cutscene. Like, Look at what that. is this? This is Monster Hunter. Like, that is what? sweet. <laughs> I've when seen have they that. ever done anything that smooth and silky? That's awesome. I mean, come on. That is pretty. They then take it you is. and have you do like the tutorial boss fight where it's just introducing you to the basic mechanics of the game. They introduce here like the first big change, which is that they have a new focus mode designed around targeting weak points that are generated dynamically in combat. So as you're fighting a monster, you might wound it on the elbow and then that will create a weakness oh. that you can then target and break effectively it's a cool idea for a system sometimes it works better than others some monsters that makes it, get a weak that makes it way easier to get um the part you want and that's one thing i remember i struggled with there's also a free to play game that's has the same gameplay as this i don't remember what it's called but it was the same there you you're not really sure what kind of the the body part you'll get which kind of sucks point like in the small of their back where you can't really get to them if you're using a lot of different weapon types at least not easily so there's been some frustration but i'm sure that also is just a matter of growing pains there you can see the glowing red spot mm -hmm. while in focus mode that opens the wound so that you can target it and deal increased damage there speaking of multiple weapons they do now support using multiple weapons you can actually have two on your person just based on your play style so if you want to play with a great sword and then a hammer you can do that if you want to play with dual blades and great swords you can do that like they really empower you to choose what you want to do and how you want to play most players i think are going to have a ranged option and then maybe a close range option which yeah i think is a, a decent way to do it but it it does often feel like you just end up playing the same way you would normally play monster hunter and that might just be because i play monster hunter the way i learned how to play monster hunter with monster hunter world so i i get my big weapon and i swing for the fences and that's just what i do and so having the <laughs> option for multiple weapons is something i'm uh -huh. not used to and i'm sure it's going to take me more than just a few hours in the beta to get a feel for how dynamic that could be plus did anyone try the beta i wish i did i totally missed it i forgot like the the beta ended yesterday and just two hours before it ended i i remember that it was live i just no i'm i'm going to bet <laughs> but i want to try this but i didn't get to try it i'm not a fan of monster hunter but this looks kind of good so i want to try before the full version but hey what are you gonna do huh hopefully they'll have another beta i doubt it but or a demo you know that would be cool
Most of the monsters we were fighting are like the tutorial monsters. Like some of them are tricky and chaotic and frantic. Free weekend. But none of them that are works. so so challenging that like you really really need to use everything at your disposal like for the most part they're pretty straightforward the one exception being this dude he is pure chaos me and Corey went at him and i mean it, it was it was a lot you can see he does a lot of damage <laughs> It was, it was tough, but uh, yeah, we had a really, really good time, and it's just, it's good to be I, back. I feel the monsters in Monster Hunter look so good. They look really good. I don't know what you think, guys, but like, especially the dragons. There's so many dragons, so many dragons, and I, you know me, you know me, I love my dragons, I love them. So that's one of the reasons I also want to try it, you know, jump in. Hey, kill a cookie, hello! How you doing? Welcome, welcome. Now, for those wondering whether or not this is like a total reinvention or this is a massive step up, like, oh man, look at that, I almost got one shot with that. If you're wondering if this is going to be like a huge evolution or something, it's frankly not, as far as I can tell. This is a refinement, this is an iteration, it's not a, a but revolution, that's good. okay? And I think that's okay, because I didn't think the Monster Hunter formula was broken or anything. They've done some things, like they want to have this sort of seamless transition between the camp, and then when you go out on quests and hunts, they want to have a seamless transition between different areas that you go into, different environments that look totally distinct and different. And they do a good job of pulling that off from what I've seen, only one map so far, but from what I've seen, they've done a really good job of that. But it doesn't feel that much different from Monster Hunter World. There's a couple of little bitty okay. tweaks and changes like the focus mode. Some weapon types, you're probably gonna be using focus mode for extended periods of time. And but it looks that's good though, gonna be more writing. Right? Other times, you're going to be not really relying at that much. Like as you can see here with my, uh, my long sword, I didn't really feel the need to use the focus mode that much because of the sweeping nature of the attack. It just <laughs> didn't really pinpoint areas that much so i didn't feel the need to use it a ton but you can see just how dynamic but i mean when you look at the map and uh i feel like the gameplay and i feel it's more like he says it's more refined it is it really is these areas are you're meant to move from place to place it, it's reminiscent of monster Hunter world but it, it still feels distinct at the same time they of course also have these environmental things where they want there to be storms that come in and go out seamlessly as you play the environment oh. should change certain animals and monsters should only come out during certain types of weather or certain times of day basically and so they just wanted to okay. feel more realistic in in that sense now having said that when it does decide to transition out of the storm you'll see how quickly it does it just into regular daylight here it's storming it's storming and then there's going to be a point up here where it stops and it will go back to just regular daytime and it's super sudden and abrupt and then it's yeah, just back was... to normal in this case you know we went back to fighting within a pit which was a whole other thing but <laughs> it happens very very quickly um maybe a whole on a whole other it's just back time and it's a point up here where it stops and it's daylight here it's storming of the storm you'll see how quickly it does it just into regular daylight here it's storming it's storming and then there's going to be a point up here where it stops and it will yeah, go back yeah. to just regular daytime and it's super sudden and abrupt and yeah, it's but isn't it like that when there's a wall of something and then you just whoop? I mean, that makes sense. And then you have that bright light, the bright white light just ah! Yeah, it it's makes sense. To normal. In this case, you know, we went back to fighting within a pit, which was a whole other thing. But it happens very, very quickly. Um, maybe a slower transition could be nice if they could tweak that. But it, I mean, it's honestly, it's not that big of a deal. It's just a little like, oh, it's daytime now. <laughs> you know, it's just, oh, okay, well. Storm's gone, whatever. So we've established it doesn't feel like that big of a revolution or anything crazy from what we've seen before. I think that's totally fine because I was perfectly fine with how the uh, formula was working beforehand. But setting that aside, how does the game actually run? How does it actually function in moment-to-moment yeah. -moment gameplay? Well, I'm of course playing this on PS5. That's the only place where it's available right now. As you can see, there's a lot of artifacting that's going oh. to happen at any given time 
where you can see all sorts of bizarre uh i think these are transparency artifacts or or like I don't think they're upscaling artifacts. I had somebody explain to me what these are, but basically it's that checkerboard pattern you can see in some games, yeah, especially that's, that's... from Capcom, where they might be struggling oh. to hit a specific resolution, so they render at a quarter resolution, then kind of guess on the rest. And pretty much no matter where you look, even though this is a 4K super high bitrate capture, you can see that pretty much all detail in the grass is gone, even as the text remains sharp. Holy Everything behind shit. it is super blurred. this is not going to be like the sharpest game it's not going to be the most cutting edge 4k 60 whatever there were no, plenty no. of times where it was struggling to run smoothly at all and i'm sure that's only going to improve as we get closer to launch but it's definitely something you notice when you're playing when i first booted it up i was like oh is there a is there performance modes or something i can do i you know, is is there something? Oh, you but can see it in the gameplay. The uh, the game runs. Damn. Is it that big of a deal? No. I, like I said, we played for three hours. After the first five, I tuned it all out and I was engaged by the game. It really wasn't that big of a deal to me, at least. But if you're somebody who's super sensitive to that type of thing, I think it's something to be aware of. But to kind of wrap up all yeah, my well, thoughts based fine. on the very fine. limited slice that I've seen and played so far, I think that it's more Monster Hunter and I find that exciting. I'm all in for that. But it does feel currently for me a little bit clunky there's little bitty things like how to post quests that's yeah but how clunky because um worlds was like that too it's a little clunky you know but how clunky is it compared to worlds because he said that it does iterate on world so i mean just different from how it was in the other games so oh. it takes you a minute to figure out and then there's other little bitty things how the menus work like i'm sorry to be that guy but like the menus are really really just text heavy and hard to navigate i'm sure once you play the game a bunch you'll get a feel for it and it won't be that big of a deal like the yeah. menu system is familiar but once you go into the specific options it gets really really text heavy and it's just hard to navigate and so that feels clunky especially when you're trying to figure out how the rest of the game works and how things are supposed <laughs> to work when you're setting it up trying to figure out how to get the game going and then beyond that like there's new things where like the mounts that you use they automatically run to the objective that you have set which initially says sounds okay. nice like oh i yeah, can just have the little fella running where i need him to go cool well the thing is like you have to manually get him to stop running towards the objective otherwise he just keeps running even getting stuck into walls or things if uh -huh. i move my uh my camera not there we go if i move that you can see that there is hold down right trigger or r2 to stop yeah slow down stop you're yeah, right there yeah running in that direction and just stand still I never thought I would care that much about just standing still, but there's so many times where I was trying to pull up a menu or something and this thing would just keep running in that direction or run into a wall or something. Or sometimes it would even be pinned to the wrong objective where I would have an objective pinned over here, a custom objective that I wanted. And it would take me to like the separate quest objective that perhaps was totally fair to take me to because it's the quest objective but it's not the thing i'm actively pursuing in that moment you know mm, so it just doesn't yeah so it's leading you to the wrong location Woo! and it seems like a big map so it's gonna take a while do what you want it to do and the thing is like that clunkiness will go away with time as you get used to the game but this is part of what happens when you're playing a game that's really familiar because it's an iteration of something you played a lot of I played a lot of Monster Hunter World. I know like the game muscle memory very, very well. So for this to have even small changes feels like massive changes. You know, it feels like a total departure from what I'm used to, even though it's just little bitty changes I'm going to get used to quickly. But listen, I okay. had a great time. And other than some performance concerns and then some like struggles to maintain decent resolutions at times, I was really pleased with the beta so far at least i'm going to continue playing it because it 
will continue to let me. And I am very interested to see what the rest of the game has to offer. But at its core, it's more Monster Hunter, much closer to the world than Rise, certainly. And I am very, very okay with it. If you were hoping this would be like a huge generational leap or something for the franchise, it doesn't really feel that way. It feels like world, but like 1.5 or maybe even 2.0, like a reinvention of it. But it, it doesn't feel like a huge leap. It's still very, very familiar. And I think that that's, if anything, more of what I was hoping for. Because again, I love world so much. I'd rather them not reinvent the mm. wheel. But that's that's where I know. Right but now. but they, they're trying to reach more players. So I think that's why uh, they even stated it in a, in a video trailer. Let me know what you think of all this. Are you going to be playing the beta yourself? Or are you going to be checking it out on PlayStation or waiting till it comes to Steam or Xbox uh, in just like a few days time? Let me know and uh, I'll, I'll consider whether we should cover this game in more detail. Historically, like Capcom stuff doesn't really jive with the Luke Stevens <laughs> Our baby that monitor. Well. Yes, the baby monitor right kind of there. That's awesome. They want to play those games, so they don't <laughs> we really had to say the one. need to go and watch content on Let's it. Let's go. But if you're interested in seeing more stuff on Monster Hunter, oh, yeah, you can't Wild, see it, but it's right there. Know. But until next time, my friends, much love, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video. Sweet. Well, that was a good one. <laughs>